One of the problems that students have as they begin modeling with DFDs and the other diagrams is how to keep them all consistent. And I want to demonstrate a very straightforward way of maintaining consistency between the data flow diagram and the data dictionary. And in essence, it is summed up in this one little phrase. Whenever you add something to the data flow diagram that is data, make sure that you record it in the data dictionary. For example, when we begin the data flow diagram, which is not leveled, we're just starting the sketch at this point as demonstrated in a previous video, all we need to worry about is when there's a data flow added, then we've got to think about how that's recorded in the data dictionary. So here we have the staff details. So what does that actually consist of? Once we think it through, we can then record it in the data dictionary. So for example, we might say, well, the staff details is going to consist only of staff ID and staff name. And that's what we write in the data dictionary. The staff details is equal to staff ID plus staff name. But on the right hand side here, we've now identified two bits of data that have not yet been defined in the data dictionary. So we would then need to identify staff ID and it's going to be described as a unique numeric value, length is equal to four digits, and also the name, which is defined as a character value of length less than or equal to 40. Having now completely defined what staff details means, we can then return to the data flow diagram. And as we are aware, this, were, this process of add staff was going to take the staff details and then send it into the data store called staff. Well, staff details has already been defined in the data dictionary, but staff, the data store, has not. And so having just added that to the data flow diagram, we can now uh, add to the data dictionary by defining staff is equal to an iteration of staff details. Then we can return to the data flow diagram and continue. Now we're going to delete staff, which means taking in a staff ID so we'll check to make sure that it's in the data dictionary. It is, so no problem, we can continue. And then we move on. Oh, this time we've got some different information, different data. So item details is new, not yet in the data dictionary. So we can add item details to the data dictionary, which is made equal to, or defined as, item ID and item name and description and price. These four bits of data have not yet been defined in the data dictionary. So to make this entry complete, we'll now add those in to the data dictionary. Item ID, item name, description, and price. None of these has any further definition required beyond the comment of what they are. With item details, we had four bits of data that needed further definition. These don't because they're just a, a low level definition just a comment to tell us what they are. Going back into the data flow diagram, we now add in the store called items, which is not yet defined in the data dictionary. So we can add items in as well, which is simply an iteration of item details. In the data flow diagram, we then have item ID coming in. Well, that's already been defined, so there's nothing else to add in the data dictionary. And then we have this interesting little combination here. It's perfectly legitimate for us to have item ID and price as the name for this flow. But now that we have a data dictionary, it's probably a better idea to have a single name for that flow and then define that name. So we'll change this name to be item price and likewise here. And so having changed the flow name to be item price, which is not something currently in the data dictionary, we just make sure that in the data dictionary, we define item price equal to item ID followed by price. And you just proceed in that way. Very straightforward, very easy to do. Having completed the initial data flow diagram, of course, it's then time to begin leveling it. As we can see here, once we've got the administrator subsystem leveled, we then got to think a bit about what happens at the next level up. So we have all these inputs coming in, which if we put them onto the next level up would be rather 
uh, a distraction because it would clutter the diagram. So what we've done is combined all those inputs into one data flow called admin input, which means then in the data dictionary, we need to define what admin input is. Well, admin input is going to be one of staff details or staff ID or item details or item ID or item price. It could be any one of those. And that's what we define in the data dictionary. Admin input equals, and then we have this, the selection here of staff details or staff ID or item details or item ID or item price. And so as we begin grouping low level processes into higher level processes, we can also group low level data flows into high level data flows. And we would continue in that way until all the data on the data flow diagram has been documented in the data dictionary. By keeping the data dictionary in step with the data flow diagram, then we are certain to have consistency between the two diagrams and consistency is very important.